I'm here, this is Dr. Mara Carpell in your golden years, and I'm here in the Austin studio with Jonathan Troen, once Hello. again, from Austin Yoga Tree. Thank you. Welcome back, Jonathan. So excited to be here. Thank I'm so you. so happy to have you back. Yeah. And I'm excited about your new program. Yes. So maybe you can talk about that. We were going to talk about yoga, but I think that the timing is perfect to talk about this. Self-love revolution. And, and it's not really a course or a program, although there is a course, there, there is a master class, but I'm, I'm hoping it's a movement mm -hmm. that, that we begin to live in a different way. We begin to change from what most of us do, which is beat ourselves up all day long, mm -hmm. to a different kind of life where we're, when we're actually kind to ourselves, at least some of the day, and as we practice more of the day, I'm not saying every moment of every day, I still beat myself up all the time, uh -huh. but I have that other part of me that is now kind to myself. Uh, so it's just a new way of living. And yes, there's a course to go along with it. There's a free intro master class. There's a deeper course if you want to go deeper into it, although all the tools are there. If you mm -hmm. just watch that free thing, half hour long, it gives you everything you need to start, to start living a different kind of life. Mm -hmm. And I, I love this because, you know, I wrote the book, The Passionate Life, and I don't think that you can really live a passionate life unless you love yourself. It's very difficult. Yes. It's, it, ha it has to be a component of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly, uh, and, and, um, you know, I have this section with frequently asked questions is, you know, and one of the things that people often ask, well, isn't this selfish? I'm only thinking mm -hmm. about me. But the truth is, it's really the opposite. Because when you're kind to yourself, it is so much easier to be kind to other people. Because, you know, most of our lives are transactional. We do something and then we expect because we did something, we should receive something in right. return. And when you're kind to yourself, when you practice self-love, you end up filling yourself up from within. You don't need anything to come to you in return. So it's just so much easier to give. And of course, the bizarre side effect of it is you end up getting everything in return. You have more than you ever want in your life. It's all there. It's amazing. That's only a side effect, to be clear. But you have everything you ever wanted. Right. Right, and I talk a lot about how you really can't, if you, if you give and you're generous, you get a lot of benefit, like you said, amazing benefits, but you will not get them if you expect something in return. Right. But if you don't love yourself, then you're always wanting something in return in order to fill yourself up because you feel empty. Yeah, it's like we're on this treadmill, right. running and running to, to feel something, to get something from someone else, and, and, then, and we might even get it for a moment but then it usually fades away at some point if it's from an outside source. Right. And we keep running and running and running. It's temporary. And that's why, you know, you ask someone, well, what'd you do today? And they go, I don't know, but I'm so exhausted. Uh -huh. Right? People say this all the time. Right. And, yeah, it, it is because it's exhausting when, you, when you're running trying to seek something nonstop. So we were talking before the show about, you know, since you were coming, I wore my namaste I love it. Scarf. I love that. Namaste scarf. And the whole namaste, what does that mean? Because it really applies, even though you're not talking about yoga, but namaste from yoga really applies to self-love. Yeah, well, a lot of people have heard that phrase now because yoga has taken, you know, a bigger part in, in our society. Um, and there are various definitions, to be clear. It's a Sanskrit word. But one of the common ones is the divine in me honors the divine in you. And I find it so interesting, the order of that translation, because the divine in me comes first. Mm -hmm. So it means in order to honor someone else, you have to recognize that there is a divine in you. So often we seek to honor other people, people who've done good things in the world, or, or people we look up to, or religious leaders, and we're, we're seeking to honor them, while at the same time we often put ourselves down. Well, I'm not good enough, and there's something wrong with me, and I'll never get to where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And what Namaste does is, you can't do it that way. You have to recognize that there is a divine in you, 
and have that part of you honor the other person. Mm -hmm. And that's what your course is about, recognizing the divine in you. Recognizing the divine in you. Yes, you have. So this this is a course on learning how to recognize it. Um, There, you know, there are four pillars. The the course goes into other details because there there are foundations that help with this. But but there are four pillars. Uh, And the first is acceptance. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I kind of talk about it as a GPS of life. Uh, If you put an address into your GPS, but your GPS doesn't know where you are, like let's say you have no cell signal and no satellite signal, you don't know where to go. Right? Uh-huh. It, says, it says searching, searching, searching. Have you ever been in this situation before? Oh, yes. Because I have. <laughs> and it is a nightmare. And you start driving around in circles waiting for the reception to pick up. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of us do with our lives because we don't want to be where we are. We don't recognize where we are. We only know we want to go there. Right. So step one is here we are. I might not like it here. But this is where I am. Let's accept where we are. Let's put that into the originating point of the GPS. Mm-hmm. And take a breath. I think that's a really important message because I think people feel that I don't want to accept where I am because if I accept where I am, I'm not going to want to change. And I don't like where I am and I want to change it. Yeah. It's such a misunderstanding of, of acceptance. And even this understanding of mindfulness, you know, people think mindfulness is, you know, is only here and now, but you can plan for the future. You just do it from a different way, from a, a place of, of I'm okay versus a place of everything is horrible. Because if you plan your future from a place of everything is horrible, when you get there, guess what? Everything will be horrible. going to be horrible. Because mm-hmm. it's interesting. You know, so I, I, I've, been, I've been coaching people for, I don't know, I guess it's about a, a decade now. And when I started, it was always create the change. That, that's what I learned. That's what I was trained with. And everyone would create great change and there'd be this momentum. But what I kept finding, and I found it with myself too, is there'd be, there'd be a great change. There'd be some great action, a great change. And then six months or a year later, I'd wind up back where I was. Mm-hmm. And even clients I'd work with, you know, they, they, they'd progress on some levels. But emotionally, underneath everything, they wound up back where they were. And I started going, something's wrong with this methodology. Something's wrong with this system. We're getting what we want, but it's not changing what's going on in our heads. Mm-hmm. So, that's, so then I really began studying this and going, okay, what, what are, are truly successful, but not in just the definition of I have a big bank account. Because a lot of those people are miserable. Many of them are happy. Many of them are miserable. So it's just not a common denominator. So I said, that can't be the common denominator. Right. So go, if, if we redefine success, and I go, okay, most people just want to be happy. What does happiness mean? Well, I discovered happiness really means a feeling of, of self-worth, which was coming from, or is for many, coming from other people. So self-love turns that around. So now it comes from inside. Right. So you don't rely on other people for your self-worth. Mm-hmm. Like this is one thing that people say. It drives me nuts. You have to learn how to charge what you're worth. You ever hear that? Yes. And I know your age group is a little different, but, but people looking to start businesses and things like that, charge what you're worth. And that drives me nuts because you should never, ever, ever charge what you're worth. Because your worth is beyond anyone's imagination. Right. And your worth cannot be judged by what someone else is willing to pay you in this moment. What someone's willing to pay you is based on what the they believe. Not even that. <laughs> the market, yes. Mm-hmm. What, they, what they believe, the value they will receive. But more than that, a part of it is they will pay what they think they're worth. Right. That's true. So if they have a low self-value, they're not going to pay you a lot because they're not worth it. In their heads. Right. So we need to build up our own self-worth. And when I started doing that, the results started to change. You got off this treadmill, this circle, like action back where we started, action back where we started. Uh And you just kept continuing and moving deeper because you were no longer relying on all these outside things to boost your own self-worth and self-happiness. So in a way, it's first 
redefining what success is. That's what led me to this understanding. That is, wow. it's not even that goal you want. I want to do this in my life. I want to leave this behind. It, it's a feeling of self-love. Well, uh, you know, even when you have a goal, if you're not happy all along the journey towards your goal, yes, then that's that's pointless. Yes, because the joy is really in the journey. Yeah, right? and you don't get to have joy in the journey unless you love yourself and feel really good about yourself because you're not going to be at that point yet. And then are creating your actions based on that. Mm -hmm. Like I always tell people, it doesn't even matter what you want. You saw, you have to define what you want so, so that you can get to why you want it. But it doesn't matter what you want. It only matters why you want it. And if you follow that journey with why you want it, then that journey, honestly, whether you reach your goal or not, now I try and get people to their goal. That's fine. But the truth is, the real truth is we never get to the full goal. That, and right. once you get there, it changes. Right, you if, have another goal. Yeah, that's if, what life is. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're not enjoying it all along the way, and you're only enjoying it at these little, oh, success, well, now I have to create something new, Right. then, you know, you have these three-minute seg segments every, you know, every month or year or two years, depending on how long it takes you to achieve what you want, that you enjoy it and then boom you're on to the next one right and then you're at the end of your life looking back and what, 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 what all those years in between why yeah. wasn't I happy yeah so it starts off with what is happiness mm -hmm. so or, or or what is success and and in my world it's a feeling of self-love and self-worth that I I don't need to get that from the outside right and therefore I can enjoy every moment it doesn't mean there's no sadness but that sadness and pain doesn't destroy you. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the second pillar is gratitude. If you're not thankful for what's in your life, you cannot live a happy life. Mm -hmm. You have to look at that. And, you know, I talk about, one of the things I mentioned is habits. And our life is based on the habits that we have. If you have bad habits, bad life. Good habits, good life. And most of us don't even think we have habits. Right. So, honestly, I work with people sometimes, I say, okay, for the next week, write down everything you do every day. And from the minute you wake up, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I, I make my coffee, or have breakfast, or meditate, or whatever it is, you have to write down, you have to know what you are doing. And I used to have this really bad habit, where at the end of the day, when I was brushing my teeth, looking in front of the mirror, I would review the day, and think of all the stuff that went wrong, either went wrong, mm -hmm. or I want to do it, but I didn't do it because I was procrastinating or whatever I was doing, and I, I would spend that time beating myself up. Mm -hmm. And then I go to sleep, after this fist fight inside right. my head with myself all bruised, I go to sleep, and I'd wake up, and that's the mindset I'd have. Yeah, that's not fun. So I've changed yeah. that habit. I review the day, and look at all the good things that happened. Now, it doesn't mean bad things didn't happen. Of course, when I was reviewing all the bad things, it didn't mean good things didn't happen. Every day is a mixture of things that went great and things that didn't go as well as you wanted right. them to for, for every human being on the planet. So now I just choose what I'm going to review, and I review the good things. I have gratitude for them. Then I go to sleep with all that good Feeling stuff. Good. Uh -huh. Then I wake up, and there's a boost of energy because... It, it multiplies day by day. Mm -hmm. The first day, yeah, you'll be down here, but over the days, it multiplies. You have to have gratitude in some way. There are many different gratitude practices, mm -hmm. but in some way, you have to have gratitude as a part of your life if you are to live a joyous life. Mm -hmm. uh, the third pillar is forgiveness. We beat ourselves up for things that happened 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. We've been playing this story. I'm sure you've worked with people that are playing oh, the story yes. in their head about something that happened so long ago. Right. Either someone else did something to them, they did something to some to someone else, or you know, they're just dreaming. My life would be different if X happened. If they did something different. And then they can't live your life now. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to rewrite their old life. You mm -hmm. can't rewrite your life. It is what it is. But you can practice forgiveness so you don't have to deal with the pain of the past. Right. 
and then you can start building a new foundation for your life. Mm, really important. Forgiveness for others and for yourself. For, for yourself is the hardest part for it most is. people. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, you're just living every day with pain from the past. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean it didn't happen. And it doesn't mean, see people get confused with forgiveness because they think it means whatever happened was okay. No, that other person may have done something completely wrong. And you may have something, done something completely wrong that is not okay. And you get to accept it. That's right, the step one, we accept mm -hmm. it. And you get to forgive yourself. You're no longer that person. Right. That was a long time ago. You have an opportunity to learn and grow and be somebody different. And if you don't forgive yourself, you can't. So are you going to live with that, in which case you can't actually give back to humanity or to mm -hmm. yourself? Or can you practice, and it is a practice, doesn't happen day one, practice forgiveness so that you can start contributing in the way you want right. to forgive now. You, you, want, you want to add and to learn, life. And learn, like you said, learn from it. Yes. Right? That's... Yeah. One of, one of the biggest things I, 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 I teach people is all you need to do is change one word in a question that most people ask themselves almost every day, if not every day, certainly weekly. And that's, why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. And if you change one word, if you change the two to a four, why did this happen for me? Mm -hmm. it, it lights up a different part of your brain. It activates a different part of your brain. But your brain will always look for an answer. So if, you, if you're looking for an answer for why did this happen to you, you will get it. Because you deserve it, because you're a mess, because you did this, because of karma, for everything right. that's going on. And if you ask the question for why did this happen for me, your brain will also find an answer. And it will trigger a different part of your brain that activates learning, that activates growth, so you can turn it into something positive. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Brain always finds an answer. Right. You just have to find the right question to ask. Uh -huh. You always get an answer for the questions that you ask. It's a part of how the subconscious mind works. Mm -hmm. And we go into that in, in, in the course, in, in Self Love Revolution. Uh, we go into into how we reprogram the subconscious mind. Because that's what really all this is based on. Mm -hmm. um, and then just to, to, to finish, so the fourth pillar would be self-love itself, or self-compassion, or at least self-friendliness. Instead of beating yourself up every day, looking in the mirror and going, you look ugly, that new wrinkle, what are you doing there, the changes in hair color, I used, to, I used to do that when my hair first started turning gray. Well, when it first started turning gray, I colored it so uh -huh. I didn't have to look at it. Yes. And the wrinkles, I, I just tried to run away from them. And now, you know, I look at the color, I look at the wrinkles, and I go, oh, well, I have to be honest. The first one is that reaction like, oh, that's new. <laughs> right? If I'm honest, I have to be honest. That's still a part of it. Right. But then I pause and I go, oh, wait a minute. I can choose to have another conversation with, with myself. Mm -hmm. And then I look at that wrinkle and I simply go, welcome to the family. Right. And everything changes in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's funny. I talk to people, like, if we stub our toe, we start screaming. And we're pissed off at our toe or whoever left whatever they did on the floor. Right. But how often do you actually thank your toe for keeping you upright? for helping you walk. Uh -huh. We don't have that as a practice. We only get pissed off at ourselves when things are bad. Mm -hmm. So this whole self-love revolution is, is about being kind to yourself. Not just when things are bad. It's not just correcting things when things are askew, but going, hey, hey Jonathan. Hey Jonathan's big toe. Thank you. <laughs> You're there. You supported me. Right. We only complain about our, we only talk about our neck when it hurts. Uh -huh. Hey, Nick, you're not hurting today. Thank you. Thanks for holding my head up. <laughs> Thanks for holding my head. Thanks for the ability to turn right and left right. and to be here. Uh -huh. And if we can do those four things, acceptance, gratitude, forgiveness, self-love, self-compassion, your life's going to be different. Mm -hmm. there, now, there are other tools which will help you with that. And, you know, if you want to take the course, it's there. We talk about the inner critics. Um, the 13 inner critics that we have. We talk about the inner guides. It's like a personal army inside of us 
that, that is fighting for our success each and every day. Mm -hmm. We can have that as a part of our life. And, and there are other things we can do, how to master our money mindset, because we have a money inner critic too, which is so powerful. And people don't understand their relationship with money. You have to transform your relationship with money. Right. If, if, you want, if you don't want it, that's fine. But I find that that's a struggling area for some people. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, for some people, it's like, no, no, I don't want enough money. That, th there's this idea that money is evil. Uh -huh. Well, the truth is money does make life easier. It, it, it doesn't mean if you have a lot, you are, you are destined to be happy, right? We spoke about that before. Right. Uh, but if you have self-love as a base, it can make it easier. It's easier to pay rent when you have money. Right. It's easier, easier to help to other people. It's easier to eat. It's easier to help other people, mm -hmm. right? You see all these charities and people go, oh, I wish I could contribute to that and contribute to that. Well, if you, if you change your relationship with money and your money mindset, you can. You can give to all of them because you know, when people talk about people with money, they, they talk about filthy rich. But no one ever talks about the beautifully rich. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of beautiful things that are created by people with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin to change our, our lexicon around right. how we view it. So th that's all a part of changing uh, really our relationship with ourselves, our subconscious beliefs, and, and how we interact with the world. Mm -hmm. And with, with regard to the money, I think that the difference in people and how they deal with money has a lot to do with what we just talked about before. If we're looking for um, that love from the outside, then those are going to be the people who just go out and buy lavish things for right. themselves and never really find happiness. Um, but if money is just a tool for us to use when we're already feeling great about ourselves, then that money can be used to better the world and help other people. Right. And and also do the things that we've always wanted to do, that we're passionate about, but yes. we couldn't do it because it involves, everything involves money. Yeah, e everything does. <laughs> it's just, but it's just an energy. It's just a part of life. So people right. go, well, everything involves money and money's bad, so that means everything's bad. No. Right. Money's... You could say it's just paper, but it's not even paper anymore. It's just a bunch of zeros and ones on a computer somewhere. Right. It's really kind of meaningless when you think about it, and our lives are wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like you said, we can change the questions we're asking. Do I spend my money on how do I impress people so that they look at me a certain way and go, oh, that person is is here. I, I should I should you know, either honor or fear or have some sort of a right. different relationship. I need to look up to that person. Or do you simply say, how can I use this to, to make life easier and better for myself and life easier and better for other people? And maybe both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Because following your passion, you're helping your most when most people are following their passion, they're helping other people in some way. They're bringing their gift into the world. Yes. So if it helps you to do that, then that's great. If they really follow their passion, that is usually a part of it because giving is what fills us up. Mm -hmm. It's really true. Um, and sometimes people go there first, and you can, and you can get rewards from that. Uh, but... If you can fill yourself up, you, you give in a different way. It's like even people that contribute to some of these, these events, they're doing it so they're seen by others. Like, I'm going to make a huge contribution, and then I want, I want my name on the door. Right. Versus just giving a contribution, and you know that you're helping right. thousands and millions of, of people. It, it affects you a different, a different way. Mm -hmm. If you live your life always looking for accolades of others, it can just be easily taken away from you. Mm -hmm. Right? And, you know, there's another thing I talk about. We were, we were conditioned from a very young age. It's how our school system is set up. And I'm not against school. I'm the son of two teachers. I, I firmly believe in, in education. And I don't believe anyone's intentionally trying to hurt us, uh, at least the teachers. There, there is a system that has been set up, which was set up to keep us in a particular place. And it's the lesson of if you work hard, 
then one day you will be successful. And if you are successful long enough, then one day you will be happy. Right. And of course, many of us have done that, and we worked hard, and some never got that other definition of success, whatever that means, right, for a lot, climbing that ladder. Mm -hmm. But then many people get it. Many of us go, okay, I climbed the ladder, I'm here in success, I'm making my six figures or seven figures or whatever it, it was supposed to be to make you happy. And you go, okay, I'm there, I've done this for my 20, 30 years, and now I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the midlife crisis really was. Right. It was. I don't believe it was spoken about in that way, but I believe that's what it was. I worked hard, I got successful, but I'm not happy and that was a part of the equation they taught mm -hmm. me. So self-love revolution flips that equation around. It goes, be happy. Well, what's happy? happiness? What we spoke about before. A feeling of worth, a feeling of self-love. Or just a feeling of love, mm -hmm. really. And now we're talking about how does that come from yourself. Be happy. When you're happy, you now are successful. Because that's all you wanted in the first place. Right. And when you're successful... It is now easy to do this work, to contribute. Work is no longer the grind because you're successful. Right. You just go out and do, and do more. And it's fun, and it's fulfilling, and it's uplifting. And there's so much happiness for other people that you're helping, and there's happiness for you. And it's, it's just and a different life. you're living the passionate life. You're living the passionate right. life. Yes, yes. So, Jonathan, how can people find out about this wonderful program, course, Movement, 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 join the movement, sign up for the movement. Go to www.selfloverevolution.com. So all you really need to know is self-love-revolution. Put the three W's in front, put the dot .com at okay. the end. There's a button. It says join the revolution. Sign up. I'll be sharing with you. Do the course if you want. If you don't, that's fine too. Just join the movement. Start practicing. I'll be sharing with you. Ask questions so we can all learn, grow, and share together. This is not about me with a microphone barking out to others, you know, looking for a tribe and a following. There's a lot of talk of tribe building and building followers. No, this is us growing together. I want a tribe of, of us, not a tribe following one person. But right. let's create a tribe of all of us together, creating, creating a movement of let's be happy so that we are successful, so that we can contribute and create a, a, a beautiful world around us. And that's what we need right now. Yes. So, Absolutely. Selfloverevolution.com. And I will post it on my web post about this show later tonight so people will they can yes. just click on it. Imagine if everyone in Washington, D.C. practiced self-love. We would have a whole oh. different world right now. Exactly. Okay. And even how we, right, there, there is, you know, you want to have those political conversations, have them from a place of self-love. Mm -hmm. You will have a different conversation. It doesn't mean you have to agree with every other person. But... You won't feel so beat up inside at the end of the day right. after you have a simple conversation, right? Your Facebook feed begins to take on a different meaning. Great. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And Thank I'm, you. I'm interested in checking this out, and I would love to have you come back.